What's up folks, today I'm here with a game that I am on console a few weeks late and on PC uh, about two years late. But seeing as this was an old school shooter, I had to do it. This is Project Warlock, probably one of the best old school shooters I have seen in quite a while. I mean, like I like it better than Ion Fury and that one was good. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? And if you would prefer an audio only version, the link is down below. So for you console people, is Project Warlock worth the $15? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. As usual, stories first. And this one is as simple as pie. You are a warlock with one goal in mind. You want to eradicate evil, all of it, by any means necessary. Then you're gonna go after the head honcho of hell. Wait. That's two goals. I mean, e either way, those are his goals. Simple. Just like a lot of old school shooters. So, here's a montage of me shooting shit to make up for the time. Project Warlock is perhaps the most fun I've had in a classic shooter, like ever. The addition of magic and melee weapons give you more options to paint the walls with the enemy's blood. The way this game is structured, you have five missions in each chapter and every mission has two to four stages, very elaborate stages. After each mission, you'll come back to the hideout where the Warlock can upgrade all of his weapons, unlock more magic abilities to use, and upgrade health, damage, your magic meter, and how much ammo you can hold. This is different than your traditional old school shooter, but it's always nice to see new ideas implemented in such a classic genre. This gives you many more options to consider for the next mission, rather than just going guns a blazing, even though about 90% of the time, that's all I did. As for the weapon variety, there are plenty of choices, and when you upgrade a weapon, let's say the machine gun for example, you can either make them a Kimbo, so you have two of them, or you can make it a nail gun. Once you pick which upgrade will be applied, you can't go back. This to me adds to the replayability, considering once you go through the campaign your first time, you do it again and you have some different weapons, technically. As for the combat, it is as fluent as it should be. You may encounter a frame drop here and there, but it's nothing major and it doesn't last for more than, what, two seconds? It really just is an instant dumb fun action game. Maybe it'll make my upcoming video about 10 dumb fun games. Hmm, maybe. Now, with every old school shooter, we always have secrets, and this game is no exception. Only this game's secrets are a tad easier to find than other games. Most of the time, the secrets are behind the wall that has a giant crack in it. So then you just hit the wall, and bada boom, you're stocked up with loot. Yes, loot, because you level up in this game. Now, once you level up, that's how you acquire points. Those points are used to upgrade some aspect of your character. Nothing more, there's no leveled enemies or anything. All in all, this is one nearly perfect old school shooter that amazed me within the first level. Once I equipped in that axe, I felt like a child at Christmas who just got a brand new nerf gun. Yeah, and I was ready to fuck shit up. Up next, we have Design. This game is more retro than my previous old school shooter, Ion Fury. But that was the intent and the execution of it was precise. Some may say bad graphics, but I'm here to say these graphics are some of the best. One thing that hands down was impressive is how many enemy designs they fit into this title. Each chapter has its own unique set of enemies and almost every stage in those chapters introduce a new type of enemy. I'm not going to attempt to tell you how many enemies are in this game, but it is damn impressive. As for the levels, I said they were elaborate, and luckily it seems that the devs did not run out of ideas because each level is extremely different than the last, and each chapter differs from the previous drastically, as one will have you in a desert, and another one they'll see you in a medieval area. One thing that caught me off guard was the soundtrack. Now, this gameplay is more metal than the soundtrack, which is kind of odd considering how just bloody it is, but not a bad thing. 
The soundtrack is very retro with hints of guitars and I swear I heard finger snapping. It was cool and I enjoyed it, but not at all what I was expecting. So here's some clips of the overall design. <laughs> Project Warlock sells for $15 on console and it's worth every penny. First off, $15 is cheaper than normal. Usually if we see a game like this, it's $20 or an Ion Fury's case $25. So $15 was another surprise when I bought it. This game is a true nod to all things it wants to be. It wants to bring players from Doom, Duke Nukem, Wolfenstein, etc. And it has every means to do so in the most entertaining way possible. This was truly a phenomenal game and experience. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this, why not subscribe? And if you didn't, well, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.